Hello and welcome back to the series on OCR and Python for anyone who's just generally interested but geared towards those without a lot of programming experience. Now in the last couple of videos we've been working with this image right here, an index of names to try to generate a list of names and get rid of kind of all the superfluous stuff. In the last video, we were able to use OpenCV to generate some bounding boxes and isolate key structures of the index. In other words, we were able to identify individual columns and then separate them out as individual ROIs. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to use these individual ROIs to start generating some OCR output and then do some post-processing on that output to generate a list of names. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing we need to do, is we can get rid of this line right now. That was just to kind of demonstrate how to, um, what the ROI looked like. Now comes the time of using PyTesseract to generate some kind of OCR output. So we're going to say OCR result is equal to, we're going to do PyTesseract um, dot image to string, and we're going to pass in uh, one key argument here, and that's going to be our ROI image. And let's just print off OCR result to see what it kind of, uh, what it looks like. So we're going to print this off and you're going to see this iterate over the three bounding boxes, the three columns. So you'll see three different outputs kind of all coming out. So this is the first one. If we keep on going on the list, we'll see a couple spaces and we'll see the second one. And we keep on going on the list, we'll see the, the third one eventually as well. So what we want to do now is we want to kind of use this output to start kind of manipulating it to get a list of individual names. So to do that, we have to think about some rules to automatically do that task. So let's say for, um, let's first kind of just separate this OCR output out. So we're going to say OCR result is equal to OCR result, and we're going to split it up essentially. We're going to separate it out into the individual uh, lines. And once we do that, we can iterate over it. So we can say for item in OCR result, result, this is going to be each individual line now. We can do some cleaning for each of these lines. We can say item is equal to item.strip. That's going to create individual lines. And let's just print off item at this stage so you can see what that looks like. It's going to look very similar, but a little cleaner. And it's going to be things in descending order without these line breaks anymore. And there you have it. Is we can start manipulating uh, this a little bit more. So we can say item is equal to item.split. And we're going to split it at an individual space. And we're going to grab just the first instance of something. And let's go ahead and rerun that again just to see what this output looks like. And again, this is a little computationally expensive. We could really just store all this outside of, of this so it doesn't have to re-OCR each time. And in fact, I think that might be a little good practice right now. So we're going to have results is equal to, we're going to just have an empty list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say for, um, for item and OCR result, we're going to say results.append item so that we can kind of work with those results uh, generally. And then what we can do is we can start printing off the results to see what they kind of look like. And what you're going to see is a list of different items in that OCR output from each of these different iterations. Like I said, we're not going to have to re-OCR it each time. Let's print that off. And we have what looks like this, a long list of um, somewhat indecipherable text that I promise you with some pre-processing, we can make this make a lot more sense. So let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. So we're gonna iterate over results. We're gonna say for item in results, we're gonna just print, well, let's not print off item. Let's do item is equal to item.strip like we saw a second ago. And then what we're gonna say is item is equal to um, item. And let's split it because each of these lines of text is going to be an individual's name, but in this case, we're working with Latin. So we really wanna grab this first name right here. We're not gonna worry about the individual's title or where they're at or any of that other superfluous information. We just wanna grab these names. So we're gonna split it, and we're gonna split it at the first instance of a space, because that's what separates an individual's name from something else. Latin, everyone has just one, uh, one name, especially in early medieval Latin. And then we're gonna grab that first index. And let's go ahead and print off item and see what that looks like. And it looks like something like this. A long list of these individual names. Uh, but one of the things that we can notice is that we still have what looks like to me some line breaks potentially in there. So we can do dot replace and get rid of the line break. We don't want that. 
and we're still seeing a line break. I'm not entirely sure why, but it's not going to really be a problem for us going forward. Uh, what we can say now is we can start making up some other rules. We can say if the length of item is greater than zero, um, that's why we're seeing line breaks here. Uh, we're not seeing line breaks. We're just getting those individual spaces that are being printed off. Um, then what we want to do is print off item. So that will actually eliminate all that. Now we have is something that's a lot more workable. Uh, however, what we're looking at is not a clear list of names yet. We're getting a lot of things that are wrong. We're getting some things that are numbers, which are coming from the different page numbers that are being referenced in the index. We don't want any of that. So let's create another condition, another rule, if you will. We're going to say if item zero dot is upper. So we're going to say if the first item or the first character is upper, then we're going to print off item. When we do that, now we're looking at is something that's a lot closer to a name list. And here's where we can start thinking about some new rules. We know that we're in the A section right now. And each section in this index is going to have something that looks like this, A period. So we know what letter we're on. So we can kind of tick through the alphabet that way. Right now, we're not going to worry about OCRing this whole index with a complex rule. We're going to make a presumption. Um, and we're going to say if item 0 or index 0 and in item is an uppercase letter and item 0 is equal to A, we can actually probably just eliminate that is upper entirely here. Um, let's go ahead and do that is a, then we want to print off item. And now what we have is a list of what's looking a lot more like a name list that can be used for an entity ruler for named entity recognition. However, we've got a few things that we can clean up. Um, one of the main things is we got some things like this right here. Uh, we got some things like this right here. Um, so what we can do is we can uh, kind of create some rules to eliminate these cases. So if we look at our original image, we'll see that these are instances where a person's name could appear in any of these forms, a doll, a del, a del with an H, etc. on down the list. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that because these are not actual names, rather variations of any of these names that kind of come after. And we can use that information later on to generate rules for data augmentation, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So we're going to say, um, create another rule and we're going to say and dash not an item. So that's going to allow us to rerun the cell and we'll notice that we have been able to eliminate those instances of a dash. And now what we can do is we can say item uh, is equal to item dot split. We're going to split everything at a period. Now, not all these are going to have periods, but we are going to see that the period is causing a couple problems here with the post OCR. And by splitting at a period, we can make sure that we eliminate anything that comes after this. So let's go ahead and try that right now. We're going to split the period. And we're going to say we want to grab the first item or the first uh, index, sorry, from there. And what we look at now, we see that uh, this has now been cleared, but we have another problem. We've got colons and we've got commas still represented in this OCR output. So we want to do some post-processing cleaning to get rid of some of those things. So we can say dot replace. We can get rid of the column, uh, comma, replace it with nothing, dot replace. We can get rid of the semicolon and replace it with nothing. And now when we print off this item, we've got something that looks a lot more legible. And finally, one thing we want to do, um, because we're not trying to create a rule to figure out what letter we are in this index, I just want to generate a clean output from this one page. I'm going to say if the length of item is actually I can specify this up here, I can make sure that the item is greater than one, actually, I think it has to be greater than two there, I can get rid of that a and now what I have is a really good list. Now I have to actually append it to a list. So we're going to have uh, entities. We're going to have that be blank. And we're going to say entities dot append item. And let's go ahead and execute that. And now we can print off our list of entities. What we have isn't necessarily a finished list. We've got some duplicates in here. So what we can do is we can get rid of our duplicates from this list by creating a new entities and make that equal to entities um, set entities. We're going to remake that into a list. A set, if you don't remember, is a list that doesn't contain any duplicates. 
Now when we do this, we'll notice that the duplicate of, I believe it was Adam I saw right there, is going to be removed. And in fact, it is now, if we go through where is a D, Adam is deleted. Let's go ahead and just sort everything. Entities.sort. And we can print off entities again. That's going to put everything in alphabetical order for us. We'll go through on down the list. And Adam should be right there. There we are. So Adam no longer has a duplicate and everything is now in alphabetical order. So this is how we were able to essentially take this original index page read it into Python as an image. In the last video, we were able to separate out each of these columns and then OCR each of these columns and do some basic post-processing methods on the on that output to then generate a list of named entities. Now that we have this list of named entities, we can create in Spacey an entity ruler to automatically go through and find these entities in a text. And because this is Latin, we can create some rules for automatically declining these individual words, which I have a whole separate video on already. Hopefully you found this video useful and interesting and you have a good basis for how to go through and automatically create an entity list from an index with OpenCV, uh, PyTesseract, and some post-processing cleaning. That's going to be it for this video. In the next part of the series, we're going to be taking another image. We're going to be specifically taking an image from the MGH edition of a man named Alcuin's letters, and we're going to try to OCR it. We're going to do a lot of fun things here, including removing this bit of text here, the footnote. We're also going to be trying to grab this metadata right here, scriptural references in the side column, and eliminating a lot of these side columns as well to get better OCR results. This is a good case study, even though it's in Latin, it's going to be useful. We're not going to read any of the Latin, um, but we're going to use this as a test case because it has a lot of problems that might occur in your own OCRing problems, such as numbers on the side, which are going to throw off OCR, things on the left margin that are going to throw off the OCR, and footnotes, which you might not want to OCR. That's going to be what part four of this series works on, is this kind of a problem. Like I always say, I keep all of my material free and open to the general public so that everyone can benefit. If you find this channel useful and you feel like contributing, please consider donating and supporting via Patreon. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you.